Video 6 Key Attributes of Cloud Computing In this video, we'll have a look at some of the key attributes a service must possess to call itself a cloud service. First, we have self-service. Cloud services must allow self-service access. You should be able to sign up online by providing your credit card details and be able to access resources at will through an online control panel. Customer should be able to request, pay and use the desired services without the intervention of human operators. The next attribute a cloud service should have is a pay-per-use utility model. Cloud providers must allow users to request and use the desired amount of services without any sort of upfront cost. You only pay for the resources you consume, nothing more. In this model, you consume cloud resources. For example, if you use a machine for 500 hours and you store one terabyte of data, then at the end of the month, you are billed for those 500 machine hours and that one terabyte of storage only. Any provider which needs a contractual commitment and upfront payments in order to use their services cannot be considered a cloud provider. Cloud services should be elastic. Cloud services must allow users to quickly provision and deprovision their resources as and when required. Let's say you have an e-commerce site which needs to about 20 servers to support your traffic during peak hours of the day and at night you do not have that much traffic and need only two servers running. Cloud services should give you the ability to change your fleet from 20 to 2 servers during the night and back to 20 servers during the day. For this to happen, you need two critical things. First, you need features provided by a cloud provider that allow you to easily and automatically scale up and down. If scaling up and down was manual and tedious, it will hamper the cloud service being elastic. And secondly, the billing model should allow elasticity. For example, if the cloud provider charges a minimum of 24 hours of usage each time you start a server, then the given e-commerce site we just mentioned will not be able to be elastic as there is no financial benefit. Most cloud providers, though charge for a minimum of, of only one hour, and many even 10 minutes, so it allows elasticity. Cloud services must offer high scalability. Cloud services must allow users to scale up and scale down their resources at internet scale. In today's world, it is not uncommon for a new application or service to acquire millions of users within a few days. If your application is hosted on the cloud, your provider should be able to give you enough resources to solve the traffic. Providers that limit you to very puny limits of few servers and few terabyte of storage cannot be considered cloud services. Cloud services must be fully virtualized and automated. What this means is that you don't get access to actual physical resource but to a virtual appliance on top of it. For example, the storage you get is not actually physical access to a hard drive. You are getting a virtual layer above it. And the servers provided are virtual instances. This allows greater sharing by allowing multi-tenant architecture where a single physical server could be hosting virtual servers from two different clients. And it has to be fully automated. Provisioning VMs or storage cannot be a manual task performed by someone at the back end. It has to be fully automated. Cloud services has to use internet protocols and technologies such as HTTP, REST, SOAP, etc. Let's say you have an application that lets you upload files to backup and download them when needed. You visit the application, browse for a file and click upload and the data gets stored on some centralized server. When you want to download, you select from a list of files and click download. In addition to this manual UI driven approach, cloud services has to give you access to the application with the help of some APIs. 
so you can access them without human intervention. This instantly makes the application more usable and automatable. If you take Amazon S3 for example or Dropbox, not only will they have UI using which you can upload and download data, but they also provide an API for upload and download methods. Now we don't need a human to click on upload of the UI. You can call the upload method, give the file name and the file is automatically uploaded to the centralized server. Similarly, you can call the download method, give the file name and the file gets downloaded. This now enables you to write another application that can interact with this cloud application to upload and download data without requiring humans. Let's say you have to back up your hard drive. Without the APIs, every time you have to manually select the files and upload them. But with APIs, you can create an application where every time you start your laptop, the application automatically syncs your data. This is much better solution compared to manually uploading files. And thus, APIs are way more powerful than UI-based solutions. This is also the key difference between a web-based application compared to a cloud solution, the APIs. A hosted service without APIs can only be called a web application. But for it to be called a cloud service, it has to provide APIs. In this video, we have taken a look at some of the key attributes of cloud computing. Take this into consideration next time you are judging a product to be a cloud product or not. In the next video, we'll take a look at some examples of the advantages of cloud computing.